Today we know that the universe had a beginning. However, this was not always the case. Before 20th century, it was common science that the universe was there from eternal past and will be there for an infinite future. It was also a common notion that the universe was static, which meant that the universe was neither expanding nor contracting. This idea was so predominant that when Albert Einstein developed his theory of general relativity, his equations showed him that the universe was expanding. To him, this idea of expanding universe seemed so displeasing that he added a contracting effect to his equations, therefore to have a static universe. This all changed in 1929 when an astronomer named Edwin Hubble observed the sky with his telescope. What he saw and observed changed the course of history and the scientific thought. To understand what he observed, we must see the following video first. This effect is called Doppler shift. Now in this audio, what happens is, as the car approaches observer, the pitch of sound decreases, or in scientific way, the wavelength decreases. And when the car goes away from the observer, the pitch of the sound decreases or the wavelength of the sound wave increases. Now Hubble couldn't hear galaxies moving away from him in space. But remember that the light is also a wave and this feature could also be shown in light. In rainbow red has the largest wavelength. And so if light coming off from an object moving away from the observer was to be observed, the wavelength of the light wouldn't be increasing or the wavelength of the light will be going towards red. Therefore, the name redshift arises. This is exactly what Edwin Hubble observed. This observation implied that the universe in no way was static. Another important aspect of his discovery was that he observed the galaxies that were farther away from him were moving at greater velocities away from him, which meant that they were showing greater redshift. Hubble drew this data onto a graph and made a straight line through it, showing that velocities of galaxies was directly proportional to the distances from the observer, which in that case was Edwin Hubble. What Hubble observed was that every galaxy is moving away from the galaxy he was on. But this did not in any way meant that our galaxy is at the center of the universe. A visual expression of what I mean by the galaxies that move, that are farther from the Earth or the observer, show greater redshift, could be this diagram. The blue dot represents galaxies in an unexpanded universe, while the gray dots represent galaxies in an expanded universe. And when we overlap the two, we can see the blue dots on the corner are displaced more than those that are on center. With every galaxy in motion, the galaxy on which Hubble was seemed to be static. However, he realized that no matter from where he took his observations, he would have gotten the same results and would have produced the same Hubble's law. If one was to have a topographic view of the universe, they would have seen each galaxy moving away from the other. The best analogy to describe what happened would be to use a balloon with tiny dots on it and which is being filled with air. The dots on the balloon represents galaxies. The balloon itself represents the universe. And the expanding balloon, of course, represents the expanding universe. As the balloon expands, each dot moves away from the other, like the galaxies did. Hubble suggested as we went back in time, these galaxies would come closer together, and therefore they must have had an origin point from where everything in the universe started, thus confirming that the universe had a beginning which we now call it as the Big Bang Theory.